Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm really excited to announce that this video is actually sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives with class topics that include illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life so that you can fit it into your hectic schedule. I've actually used Skillshare before, back when I was a student in college, and I took a class called Introduction to Designing Repeat Patterns in Illustrator. What I realized was that I learned just as much from that one Skillshare class as I would have in uh, one of the projects that I would have done for a surface class at school, which really surprised me. And it didn't really cost an arm and leg to do so, and I did it in like the comfort of my own house, which is like something an introvert like me would always uh, prefer. Compared to in-person classes, Skillshare is extremely affordable at an annual subscription of less than $10 a month. Some classes I would recommend you guys to take based off all the questions you guys ask me every day uh, would be the personal branding, crafting your social media presence, I think as a freelance illustrator or an artist or a creative, it's really important to build your personal brand, um, especially if you want to make this into a career path. Having a personal brand will let people know like what distinguishes you from the next person. A lot of you guys ask me like, how are you able to find your style and your voice in your work? And taking classes like these will give you like a better understanding of how to approach it. The first 500 people to click the link that I provide in my description will get two months for free. So you don't even have to worry about paying for the first two months. You can try it out, see if you like it or not. I hope you make 2020 the year to stay curious and to further your passions creatively uh, through Skillshare. Let's get on to the video. 欢迎回到我的工作室视频博客 <笑>因为我因为我喜欢出去的时候顺便把我的货取掉所以我不用再跑出去两次所以今天有三个货要包有一个要等到我新的卡片来因为它是很闪耀那个小小red pen的卡片 所以我今天就先包一个贴子的和一个original painting 我把这个小画卖掉了
我现在要画两张贴纸，新的贴纸，所以我现在在我的平板画给你看。我通常会把我用 Posca marker 画的图照相以后，把它放进来。So right now I'm gonna be ordering some stickers from Sticker App because I'm tired of having to figure out my printer and cutting every single sticker takes a long time. So I'm gonna just just buy them all at once. So these five stickers are the ones that I'm gonna order because I ran out of these three and these two are new designs. I'm gonna plan to make like a sticker set, I think, of all the farm animals I drew before. But for now, I'm gonna just do this because I'm running low on stickers. Hello, it is Monday, the 2nd of March and I got two packages in the mail that I actually wasn't expecting. I kind of don't remember why I have these or who sent them to me but I guess we'll find out once we open it what's inside of this um, the first one is Jay Soupy she has this really tiny cute flower on the corner of her envelope I love Jay Soupy's work her stuff is just so cute and so amazing in every way she sent me like this little cute wrapped up package with something mysterious inside and she sent me a knife kirby that says be kind which is so adorable and it's on a little switch backing card which is so cute okay and the next package this mysterious package that i actually don't know who this is from or where it's from it's packaged very similarly to j soupies so i thought she sent me two but i don't think so this one has really cute stickers right there. Another little peach peach dude right there. Really cute. I'm gonna try not to rip it. 
but I'm never good at not ripping tissue paper. Ugh, shit, I ripped it. Wait, did I? Did I? Did I? Okay, I ripped it a little bit. Uh, okay, there. I ripped it. Felix, thank you so much. Your Pokemon illustrations and your little peach fruit illustrations and everything is just so freaking goddamn so cute. And I don't know why I curse more when things are cute. Good morning. It's Wednesday, I think. And I'm just getting ready for work. But I thought I would come on and talk about skinny shaming because a lot of you mentioned in my last vlog that you would still want me to talk about it since I lost the footage for that scene and I was talking about how I didn't want to keep repeating myself because it felt less genuine in a way. Maybe now that like a few days have passed, maybe I have more to say about it. So I'm probably going to overlay some footage of me working this week because um, that's kind of like my favorite way of making videos now is just talking while working because I really love it when like Stephanie Sue is telling a story while she's doing her thing. So skinny shaming for me actually started when I was in elementary school. I, I think the first encounter that I had with skinny shaming was when I was just on the field or on a basketball court. I was just doing my own thing, playing my own sport. And then this little kid, this dude just comes up to me and he was like, oh man, are you anorexic or something? And at the time I was like in elementary school, I didn't really know what that meant. And I have no idea how he knew what that meant. Okay, it's kind of hard to draw eyebrows and talk to a camera. I might just tell you guys this story while I'm driving to work. I might be more focused. So I'm on my way to work now and I think I'm going to just continue talking um, on the car. I remember him coming up to me and literally just saying like, are you anorexic or something? And then me being a, I think like a fourth grader, I didn't know what that meant. Like I didn't know what being anorexic was supposed to mean or be. And so it didn't really affect me much then. But as I grew older, I just kept thinking about that one time. And now that I know, or when I found out what anorexia was, I was kind of like, cause I wasn't trying to be skinny or look skinny. It's just like how I am, that's how my body is. It's just really hard for me to put on weight. So I just kind of, I do sometimes kind of look like a sack of bones, I guess you can say, because that's also another way people would refer to my body. I don't want people to see me talking about this and come off as like, oh wow, you're so skinny, you must have so many problems. And a lot of my friends too, um, I don't, I don't think I've ever told this to them before, but they're always saying stuff like, man, you're so skinny, it must be nice, um, can you take my fat? And I would say, like, I'd gladly take your fat, because I honestly, I would have if I could, but I don't know, it's just things like that kind of irked me a little growing up and not as much anymore, but it still does. Um, but you know, with skinny shaming, there's always fat shaming and people always say like, you know, it's so different. They say, oh, skinny shaming isn't like fat shaming. Like. There's no reason for you to feel bad about being skinny because that's what everyone wants to be. Which isn't true, like, every body type is perfectly fine. Everyone's beautiful in their own way. And they don't think that skinny shaming is as extreme as fat shaming in terms of, like, the way we f the way it damages us emotionally. And I don't think it's talked about as much either because we do live in a society where everyone wants to be skinny. And so I guess people see skinny shaming as just like a compliment in a way, which kind of sucks if I'm being honest. 
I'm constantly bombarded with comments about my appearance, especially my weight. Um, I think it's mainly because I was raised in like an Asian household. Like we're kind of pretty, pretty, uh, I don't know. Like we're pretty honest, I would say. Um, which isn't a bad thing because I always appreciate honesty. But when I start going to like family dinners or just like, I don't know, saying hi to like a family friend or maybe like just a friend's mom, I think almost every time the first thing they say is, Wow, Tiffany, ni hao so, ni dian, which pretty much means like, Tiffany, you're so skinny, you should eat more. And that's like, honestly, a lot of uh, parents say that even to kids that aren't skinny. It's just like, oh, eat more, eat more. But the fact that they paired it with, you're so skinny, you need to gain weight to look prettier. I've also got that comment a few times too from like grandparents and stuff like that. So I guess it just ingrained into my head that in order to be pretty, I need to eat a lot and grow some more fat on my body in order to look pretty so I guess it translated in my head as I'm not pretty because I'm so skinny and that's just kind of how things were back when I lived in uh, my hometown after I moved to Vegas I started being more conscious about like um, wanting to better myself as a person and so I'm trying to make myself better in every aspect. Um, and I'm not saying that anyone has to do all these things to make changes to their body. I think I just wanted to do, like, I wanted to exercise, I wanted to weight lift and weight train and do 5x5 five five because... Oh, okay, so 5x5 five five is like a, a weight training program um, that I'm doing currently, but... Uh, I'm not saying that anyone has to change anything about their appearance, it's just this this program and just like working out in general has made me so much more confident in myself and it has made me healthier as a person as well, which is always something that I wanted because being skinny, I was very weak and I was always seen as like this weak little girl everyone asked if like oh your your arms are like twigs can i break it like it looks so breakable and so i kind of don't want that kind of image for myself and i didn't really understand like what they meant when they said that because to me i looked i looked fine i didn't look like i was gonna die or anything but apparently to them i looked like i was unhealthy i wasn't strong and I guess I just, after I started working out, I felt a lot more confident about my body and who I was, and both of my bosses were very supportive. They they were actually the ones that introduced me to 5x5s, five five and they helped me, um, they helped me a lot with gaining weight and just being and feeling more confident about who I was and the reason why I started talking about this because I didn't I don't want it to seem like it's all like out of the blue all of a sudden but it was because I think before my last video that I lost I for some reason was starting to eat more and I think it's because I was exercising more and so my body needed more like protein and everything and it was telling me that I needed more food because I was hungry all the time and I was able to eat. So before I came to Vegas, I was around 91, 92 pounds on a bad day during college where I wouldn't really have too much time to sit down and eat. I would be around, I would sometimes drop down to 89 pounds. Yeah, but anyways, I weighed myself for the first time after maybe like two weeks and I was 90, I want to say I was 98 pounds and that really 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 boosted me up like 
I think the biggest number in my life that I would want to hit would just be my weight reaching 100 pounds. Being 98 pounds, that's like a six pound jump from what I was before. I was so proud of myself in a way. And I guess that triggered me to want to gain that weight faster. And so I started to like really care about my diet and eating enough protein and stuff like that. I might not be eating the most healthy because I am eating out a lot, but I'd rather, you know, I'd rather eat out and get enough food into my body than go home and eat like chicken nuggets for dinner. And I think uh, eating with my bosses and coworkers also really helps me gain weight because uh, I think because my boss eats pretty fast um, and he eats a lot too. So a lot of the times I, especially when I first started working, I wasn't able to match their eating speed, so I would pretty much finish like maybe two thirds of a bowl and they'd be done and I would feel very bad that they're just sitting there so I would just kind of leave. So as time progressed, I learned that I needed to kind of match their speed and eat a little faster. And so since then, and because I have like this bad habit of always stopping after I was full, like I would have delicious food in front of me no matter how delicious it was, if I was full after a few bites because I was eating so slow, I would just stop eating and just go back to work because I, like it's a bad mindset. I think I may have gotten it from college because um, I just always wanted to finish my work and so I would just fill myself up until I didn't feel hungry anymore and I would just go back. I wasn't full or anything, I was just content and I think that's why I didn't get enough um, food into my system. But now that I'm eating faster, I don't even have time to think about like, oh my stomach's not hungry anymore, I can stop eating. I pretty much just eat, 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 and then I feel full. So now instead of eating till I'm just content, I'm eating till I'm actually full, like a, like a healthy full, not like a stuffing myself full. Hopefully I'll reach that goal soon. I haven't weighed myself in a while. If you ever feel like someone's criticizing you for the way you look and the way you feel, honestly, it's like this is really hard to do and it takes a lot of practice, but it, all, it also comes with like maturity and age when you just have to say like, I don't really give a shit. People say a lot of things that they mean or they don't mean, but like it's just a bunch of words. Like they can't really do anything to you have to make changes for no one because they don't own you no one owns you 